Minister, fellow members of parliament, leaders from different political parties, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observe. I am overwhelmed by the attendance. I must note that this is the biggest speaker reunion I've attended, and I've attended all of them. And because of that, because it's in Guru, I'll speak to you in two languages. First in English, and finally in Lua. I'm glad to be here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Chagulanyi Sentamu. I rarely use the name Robert. Why? Because it was a very slight mistake. I could have been Robert. You see, I'm one of uh, the many students of uh, Norbert Mao. I was his student for a long time before he met me and even before I met him. I was learning from him through his eloquence, through the values that he represented right from the days of university. I wonder if I was also teaching him a thing or two through my music. Sure, I'm humbled, Mr. President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on a presidential invitation. I was invited by President Norman Mao. And that's why I put on the suit when I'm coming. I've been to Gulu so many times. But every time I come here, I come as a musician, as Bobby Wine. And as a matter of fact, when I was coming in, I noticed that Bobby Wine is more welcome than Chiagulani. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the route to balance the two. I'm humbled to be here, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, when I was coming here, I noted this at McKennedy, and I'm noting it again, that when I'm attending a function where there are all these eloquent orators, I wonder what I'm going to say to them. And equally, when I was coming here, one, I knew that you, the people of Guru, know all the things I'm going to talk about. And the time I've been here, I've heard that things have been put straight. I mean, you have Nobat Mao, you have Komakech Viandra, you have all these other guys, you know stuff. So when I was coming here, I was wondering what I'm going to communicate to you. You see, I've been having problems. Initially, I was a musician. Many of you knew me as a musician. And I was playing my role in the country as a musician playing my guitar or playing my beats and communicating the plight of people that the majority go through the same stuff that I go through. But maybe there came a time when I had to put it a notch higher by emulating the likes of Segona, the likes of Mukaku, the likes of Nyanzi to also play a role in the liberation of this motherland. So, of late I've tried to interest myself so much with the struggles of freedom and liberation, not only in Uganda, but the country over. And it actually caused me some problems because I was caught reading a book at a function recently, which people thought was worse than the ministers who sleep at function. <laughs> so in a similar manner, when my brother, the president of UID, was communicating in law, I couldn't understand, but I've learned not to carry books. So I carried them on my phone. And I was going through a book called Uganda Since Independence. A story of unfulfilled promises. And it triggered me, it inspired me, and I thought maybe I could communicate to the people of Kulu, particularly the people that fall under my generation, about these things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our story has been a terrible story. And as we stand here in Gulu today, I believe that this town has had its taste of the good, the bad, and the ugly of Uganda's terrible story since independence. In 1962, ladies and gentlemen, our grandfathers and fathers 
came together. They were tired of colonialism. They wanted to determine their own destiny. They wanted self-governance. They came together, they protested, they organized, they demanded for independence, and they got it. And yes, on the 9th of October 1962, all bars, all alcohol was finished. They were celebrating. They knew that now it is their sons and daughters in control of their destiny. And things would never be the same. It started off well, but in a few years, ladies and gentlemen, unwanted guests started coming in into our politics. Guests like greed, guests like corruption, guests like tribalism. And yes, by 1966, our country had already gone on its knees. It was chaos again. The celebration has turned into chaos. It was until President Idi Amin took over. And yes, there were celebrations in Kampala. And I believe here, people thought that we are, they were starting a new story. They believed that a new day had come. And they rejoiced. But it was, it was a very, very short time. And very soon, they found themselves in the darkest of the night. It went on like that. People gave up, they lost hope. But there were some stubborn ones, like the ones sitting here, that went to Moshi, reorganized, and redeemed their country. However, the, 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 the same story, the, the same cycle that we are been going through continued. Maybe because the people then had not learned enough from that chaotic past. The story went on, ladies and gentlemen, until in 1986, when President Museveni brought Ugandans yet together again. He collected young men and women, not using ballots but bullets, convinced them that they would introduce a better country. And indeed, they went right ahead and promised a country and promised an overhaul of the country. They promised a fundamental change. They promised rule of law. They promised everything that we long for, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, President Museveni looked like any other prophet. Many people were cynical, many people were critical, and many did believe what he was saying. But he stood for it. And in my opinion, for those 10 years since 1986 to 1996, he tried to prove them wrong. But yet again, unwanted guests showed up, and this time massively. Corruption, tribalism, greed, and greed was in the capital letters this time. <laughs> 32 years later, we find ourselves in the same junction, ladies and gentlemen. The junction that some of us had not noted because it was not biting enough. 32 years later, the president continues to impose himself on the people of Uganda. All the achievements that we have got faded away. All the principles of good governance, like, 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 like basic freedoms and the rule of law, were kicked out through the window. And we are here again, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the things I'm talking about, you know. I see people that must have been there, that must have been my age or older or slightly younger in 1986. They are here right now. The things I'm talking about, you know. Many of you even here are graduates, but you can five years later, you cannot find a job. That is where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we have cried, we have... Uh, um, um, consoled ourselves over what has gone wrong. But again, I have news to you, ladies and gentlemen. We are here again. But lucky enough, we are many, we are informed, we have a big book of history of our nation to learn from. We are right here. We are at the crossroads again to decide whether to learn from the wrongs of the past or to continue doing them. We are here right now. One thing I believe is that we have everything it takes to recreate a new country. We have everything it takes. 
when President Wanika was here, he made us stand up. And he saw so many young people. It's not just age for me. When I see you, I see ability. I see that you have time. I see that you have energy. But most importantly, you are in the time where you can invest and be sure that you will enjoy the country you're preparing long enough because you're still young. So, while I talk to you now, I believe that those that, 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 that think that it's impossible, 